a lone hominid sits beside a motionless companion, gently rocking, as if refusing to accept the quiet that has settled into the bones. They recognize danger, but something ancient and unformed compels them to remain close to the one who no longer moves. This touch is not for grooming, dominance, or hunger, an early echo of what will someday be sorrow. Fear coexists with attachment. These early minds wrestle with instincts that have no names. The circle is not planned. It forms naturally, a reflex shaped by belonging. They look up, not with hunger, but defiance. This body is not to be taken. It does not know why it does this. A gesture before meaning, an instinct toward care. It is not speech, not yet, but emotion finds a way to speak without language. She senses the boundary between life and silence. She presses her child close as if to affirm its warmth. This simple act accidental or intentional, becomes the seed of ritual. Age grants perspective. The elder seems to understand that leaving this place too quickly would break something fragile. Silence becomes the first language of grief. The hominids sense the threat, yet they hold their ground. Protecting the dead becomes more important than safety. The living protect the dead, not for food or territory, but something deeper. They struggle with the weight, but the effort reveals intention. The fallen one must not be left exposed. Shade is shelter, safety, and symbol, chosen without knowing why. The hominids lay the body down gently as though returning it to the place from which all life rises. A gesture beyond instinct, perhaps the earliest spark of ritual, love, or memory. Their departure is hesitant. Something has changed in them forever. The first funeral is complete. The hominid group huddles together, uneasy. The hollow behind them holds more than a body. Something unspoken lingers in the night air. The young homie who touched the body earlier trembles. Night has always meant danger. The leopard returns, sensing weakness. The hominid circle tightens. Their unity, forged by grief, becomes their shield. They have never defended a place for symbolic reasons before. Tonight, the hollow becomes territory, not for living bodies, but for a memory. The European male and female hominids stand unflinching. Even predators recognize when prey stands with purpose. It leaves, perhaps confused. This hominid band does not behave like prey. It brushes soil back into place, a gesture no instinct wrote into their bones. <sighs> These soft calls are not for warning, not for mating, and they hold emotional weight. Shared loss tightens their bonds. Community becomes survival. It watches the rising sun, as though guarding both the living and the dead. A test of instinct versus meaning begins. Do they defend the dead again? They chase the hyena away, not for food, but for dignity. A remarkable shift has taken root. Cooperation strengthens. The hominid band realizes unity is its greatest tool. Loss has softened them. What was once competition becomes quiet cooperation. Knowledge transfer, rare and fragile, begins to form, born from tightened social ties. No instinct compels them, yet they gather there. Memory is forming its earliest shape. Not food. A symbol, a simple offering that hints at spiritual dawn. Their posture carries meaning, unity, 
recognition, and perhaps the earliest shape of mourning ritual. Moments now show cohesion. The funeral has reshaped how these hominids walk the world. For the first time in Earth's history, a creature looks back in remembrance. In that glance, humanity's future takes root. The hominid group senses the storm's approach, but reacts differently now, gathering together before fear takes hold. Their unity has become instinct. Age once meant vulnerability, but now the group looks to the Elder for cues, the earliest flicker of leadership. Cooperation sharpens. Survival becomes coordinated rather than frantic. Instead of scattering, they shelter together, learning the safety of shared intention. The flash triggers memory. The hominid band recognizes that the storm threatens more than their bodies. It threatens something they now protect emotionally. Their sprint is not for food or shelter. It's for a connection they hadn't known they could feel. This is no accident. It is intentional behavior, proto-ritual a monumental step in hominid evolution. The gesture means nothing and everything. Symbolism stirs in a mind that has never known symbols. A new behavior emerges, collective mourning, a proto-ceremony born in the stormlight. The hominids remain by the mound until the final drops fall, as though waiting for permission to leave. The group wakes changed. Their emotional landscape has widened. Subgroups form, alliances based on familiarity and shared ritual rather than dominance. Memory becomes a lesson, not just an instinctive flicker. There is less shoving, less competition. Ritual has bred empathy. Shared grief has sharpened compassion. Social care begins to take root. Leadership becomes distributed, the earliest shape of social structure among hominids. Grooming shifts from necessity to emotional bonding, a glue for the community. Their visits are no longer driven by fear, only remembrance. Their silence holds meaning. Grief has become part of identity. They lean behind the first funeral in history and carry with them the birth of culture, empathy, and shared purpose.